A vector network analyzer measures what is called S parameters, scattering parameters. So in, in very broad terms, it is the transmission and reflection of electromagnetic signals through a, a PCB or through a, a transmission line. Yes, absolutely, and that's when VNAs, vector network analyzers, VNAs come into play. Um, other tools start having issues when you go to very high uh, speeds, very high frequencies. Um, VNAs do have a defined measurement accuracy at high frequencies, so uh, those are the tools of choice as opposed to, for example, TDR tools that are more popular for lower frequencies. Right. And the nice thing about TDR is that they are very intuitive. Right? You see a time domain trace and that is really nice. I mean, you kind of know when you're probing, for example, for PCB. Right. So TDRs are very powerful, very intuitive and really easy to use tools. Um, and the advantage of core of TDRs is they are very intuitive, easy to use. Um, the problem is when you go to higher frequencies, uh, very hard to say where the transition is, a few gigahertz um, where TDRs, so the measurement uncertainty of TDRs becomes very high. What we've seen from some of our customers is that they measure a certain structure of the TDR and it passes the, 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 the measurement criteria. The next day they do the same measurement, same probe, same setup, and it fails. With the VNA, the measurement certain is defined. You can have a very well, very sophisticated reference plane calibration, and the rep repeatability is, is excellent of VNAs. That's something that TDRs cannot do. Plus, TDRs become very pricey at high frequencies, so you've got a not very accurate instruments at high frequencies, and a very high cost, and, and I mean, VNAs are a tool of choice when you go beyond a few gigahertz. The, the VNAs used to be super expensive. Um, they come down in price a lot. Um, they are very competitive. Now, if you're talking about a few kilohertz, um, VNAs tend to be more pricey. Um, but at, at, at gigahertz frequencies, um, given the measurement accuracy, given the um, uh, false positive, false negatives, uh, the overall cost of VNAs tends to be very beneficial if you consider everything. Yeah, so the question is what VNA, what fre top frequency of VNA do you need for let's say 40 gigabit per second uh, channel measurements? Um, yeah, this, that is a difficult question to answer. I mean, the more frequency, the higher frequency, the better, of course, but of course the cost gets higher. Usually people tend to think three to five times the fundamental frequency is what they need. And that, that's for VNAs too. Now for VNAs, for our VNAs, there is a enhanced resolution feature where you can uh, have measurements, or you can extrapolate measurements to higher frequency than the hardware of the instruments can measure. Uh, it's a fairly sophisticated algorithm that's using mini minimum energy uh, techniques. It works pretty well in most cases um, and that, that's a way of using an existing VNA that doesn't have the frequency for higher frequencies um, and that's a workaround, right? This is not something that I would say works in all cases but if you don't have the possibility you can use the enhanced resolution to uh, get to higher frequencies. Yeah, it's, it's, this, this can be a difficult thing to do. Um, and it, 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 the, the key is in the tools that you're using. So as a signal integrity engineer, you have mostly four tools. Right? Bit array test set, oscilloscope, TDR, and VNA. And so the bit array test set gives what is the first test? bit error rate test so set, a BERT, the BERT. Yeah. Right, it gives you an overall performance. It, it's very difficult to drill apart what is jitter and what is crosstalk. Oscilloscopes, they are sophisticated algorithms where you maybe can identify some of the crosstalk, uh, maybe not, I guess that's still under discussion. TDR, we talked about this already, starts falling, it starts getting difficult for higher frequencies, mostly because of measurement accuracy and reproducibility. And with the VNA, it is actually very easy to identify crosstalk because you measure from your aggressor to your victim and that is related to crosstalk. So you measure the channel directly and you identify the crosstalk very easily. The problem is that the crosstalk tends to, well, if you have very high level of crosstalk, you're out of luck anyhow. If you have relatively low level of crosstalk, you start getting into measurement 
errors or, or noise issues with the TDR. You know, TDRs don't have a very high dynamic range. Um, so that, that tends to be a problem with TDRs. Um, so if you have a lot of crosstalk, you probably know it already, you can measure it with the TDR. If you have low level of crosstalk, the TDR might just not be the right tool and, and you really do have to use a BNA for, for these measurements. So the thing I'm usually hearing from people who are new to BNAs, especially people who use very old BNAs that are you know, 20, 30 years old and, and still work, you need to be an expert to actually set up the BNA. And you know, most people, when they have a setup, they don't touch it anymore because you're probably not going to get back to the same, the same setup. And, and that, that, is a, that is a big problem. So it's a lot of usability problems um, that the old VNAs had. Um, and with modern VNAs, this is not really a problem anymore. And we're trying to make the VNAs easy to use. So with a little bit of training, pretty much anybody can use VNAs. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different ballpark than it used to be just 10, 20 years ago. And probing is a really good topic um, because if you probe PCBs, you never really, really know if your probe make good contact or not. And you know, just looking at the time at the frequency domain trace, um, that that can be hard to distinguish if you're just a little bit off with the probe tips or not. So what what modern BNAs have is that you can display a TDR trace, so inverse Fourier transform, at the same time as you display a uh, frequency domain plot. And you can really see if the probes make contact or not. I mean, you kind of see if it goes, yep. You can make that up. Yeah, yeah you look at the impedance over distance and uh, you see exactly where the probes uh, contact. You see a little bit of a ripple in the trace or you see if they're open and um, don't make contact. Well, I mean, you need to make sure that your probe pads are part of your design. And, and you need to be able to de-embed the probes from your transmission line. Uh, de-embedding can be a very challenging thing, especially, uh, and there are different levels of de-embedding that are out there. There's um, you know, simply chopping off part of the traces is a simple way that sometimes works. Uh, we do support much more sophisticated ways that give you uh, causal uh, results. Um, so you can, de depending on what you need to do, uh, how accurate you need to be, what kind of frequency you're looking at, um, you need to you know, dip deep into the toolkit that's available to you to get reliable results. So the typical use case is that you have a chip on a PCB and you want to de-embed the PCB, you just want to characterize the, the chip itself. That's a typical de-embedding setup. Um, so you start talking about issues, and, and typically you have a reference trace somewhere on the PCB or a separate coupon. Right. Now, given the manufacturing tolerances of a PCB, that, that can be challenging because your coupon is not always the same as the traces. Um, you know, the, the more accurate, of course, the more the less variation you have in the PCB, the better, but of course the cost becomes an issue. So this is kind of something that signal uh, integrity engineers are, are really concerned about. And yes, VNAs do support JITO measurements. Um, the VNAs measure the channel per se, so the, the, the response or the characteristics of the traces on the PCB. And then they use the channel measurements to simulate eye diagrams or jitter um, and so it's a simulated bit pattern and a receiver that's that's done in software and, and that gives the designers a quick and easy way to estimate the channel capacity of a specific design before they actually populate a, a circuit board. I've been going to DesignCon for 10 years I, I guess and it's a so as a test and measurement company, I think we have a pretty good handle on trends in the industry. DesignCon design is a good way of, of verifying things and kind of understanding what's real and what's kind of fud and, and you know, what, what's going to bubble up, uh, what will be a, a real trend in the industry in the coming future. So it's, it's great to connect to the experts in the field and, um, and the users. 
and users, absolutely. Yeah. Well, first of all, be early and find a good parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's very practical advice. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's just a great community. The Signal Integrity community is a great community. Everybody is really trying to help each other, um, connect with people. It's, it's just a very diverse, very open community. It's, it's great to hang out in the coffee shop down here and, and chat with some people and understand what's going on and, and um, what they're up to.